It is a pleasure once again to connect with a guy that is no stranger to this city, to this province, to this country, a former TFC guy, and now the new head coach of the Tampa Bay Rowdies, Thomas Rongan. Thomas, welcome. Thank you, Anthony. Great to be on the, on the show again. Pleasure to have you on, and i got to tell you, a lot of people are excited for you, happy for you to see you that you're back in the game, in the NASL. How did this all come about with you in Tampa Bay, Thomas? Well, very simple. Uh, uh, a very good friend, but more so a, a very good colleague that I worked for when he was the president of the Tampa Bay uh, Mutiny in 96 when MLS started. I became the president and general manager of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. And he reached out to me and, and, and asked me if we wanted to do something special again, like we did in 96, for building an attractive and a great team that won a supporter shield. And uh, uh, as I said again, uh, had some, some, some real special players on that. So it was a very easy easy decision for me to be with somebody, uh, Farouk Qureshi, that, uh, uh, that I value, that, that has great vision, and, and, and has a, a tremendous understanding of the technical side of the game and uh, allows me to be the coach that I can be and, and, and be able to, you know, have his vision uh, be uh, transferred into our locker room. If you want to build not only a, a great franchise, but want to build a franchise that people can be proud of uh, throughout this country. Thomas, a big responsibility. The Tampa Bay Rowdies have been around for a number of years. They've had a number of superstar players on their roster. Their fans are quite knowledgeable. They know the game and they supported the Rowdies uh, for a number of years. This is a big responsibility uh, to you uh, as a head coach. Are you going to make sure that they get every penny, every dollar of their ticket, uh, you know, really maximized and bring them entertaining soccer? Are you going to play an offensive style, Thomas? Or are you going to play uh, a style that is going to be more defensive? What type of style are you going to bring to Tampa Bay? No, we're going to play a style that uh, my under-20 national team played in Canada in 2007 when we beat Brazil and we beat uh, Uruguay with Cavani and Luis Suarez. It's going to be entertaining, it's going to be attacking, it's going to be creative, it's going to be possession-oriented, uh, it's going to be athletic, uh, and, and we're going to represent uh, this area, this city, very well, and I think that, that our, our fans will, will embrace us, uh, uh, similar to what we did in 96, and, and this is look at my track record, the most, most of the teams that I coached uh, always outscored the opponents, and we always had a plus-minus uh, record, because yes, we also emphasized uh, playing good defense, but our uh, mantra and our, our, our vision really was to, to play in half the opponent and, and uh, create as many opportunities as we could and, and obviously finish as many as we, as we can as well and, and, and be victorious. Thomas, a lot of people like to consider the NASL the second tier in North America. I, I disagree in many ways. I've seen a FC Edmonton in the Canada Cup basically, for my money, take out the Montreal Impact if it wasn't for a horrible call by the ref, and they competed toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, with Montreal. We see that Jurgen Klinsmann has called up uh, Ibarra from Minnesota to the U.S. national team. Uh, we see that the Cosmos and San Antonio Scorpions pack them in and bring uh, players from overseas uh, to help their youngsters. How important is it that this league starts to get more and more respect, like guys like you that have now taken over as head coach of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Well, let's be real honest. You know, we, we have great legacy with with teams like the Fort Lauderdale Strikers, the Cosmos, and the Rowdies. Obviously, the original teams that were part of the NESL as well. And our fans are very keenly aware of our tradition and our past, which I think is 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 wonderful. Uh, and then we understand where we are in the landscape of, of U.S. soccer. We we feel we can compete with MLS teams, and I hope the Open Cup will, will show us uh, this year. We are bringing in international players that, uh, uh, that can contribute and are exciting players that fans want to, want, want to see. We continue to develop uh, American players as well, young players that, uh, that eventually could become uh, national team players. So I feel that we, uh, uh, we are a league that's, that's vibrant, that's young, uh, great ownership, uh, in particular in our case as well, uh, that are willing to spend money in building soccer-specific stadiums uh, and bringing in a, a product that, as I said again, uh, is of high quality. And if that means we can sell some players to Europe, that means that uh, some players can make the transition to MLS and we can make some money in terms of transfer fees. Uh, that's, that's part of uh, uh, what we are all about. And, and, and as I said again, 
we have a unique opportunity here in, in uh, with the rallies to do something very special in the short but also in the long term. Thomas, how important is it to bring uh, a couple veterans to your squad that can help groom the youngsters to become uh, great players on the pitch but also off the pitch? How important is it to bring in a veteran that doesn't have a chip on their shoulder that may be still upset that they're not in that first tier in MLS or in Europe, but a veteran that's going to be positive in your locker room? Uh, absolutely important from, from day one. Uh, that's been the ingredient to our success in the past as well. Um, by finding that great balance, uh, as I said again, we want great players. We want players with character. Uh, we want experienced players that, that care about their teammates, and particularly younger players that can groom them uh, to, be, to become good players. Uh, we want uh, experienced players because they can be the extension of the coaching staff in the field and, and are good communicators and are leaders. Um, you know, and, and I think we're, we're going to do a due diligence by, uh, by bringing in players in key positions, in particular in the field, that have some experience and I'm built with uh, younger players around them to be a, a well-balanced uh, team from a, 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 an age standpoint, but also from a, uh, a playing and technical standpoint. Thomas, you're in an area where it is a special area. That climate is absolutely outstanding year-round. Is this something that's going to help you, your staff, and your players that they're able to train outdoors 12 months of the year, unlike many of the other clubs? Yes, it, it, it clearly is an advantage. And uh, uh, it will be an advantage, too, because it's hot, it's humid. Uh, we would like at home to be able to dictate, especially later, in the later stages of the game, uh, the pace of the game and, and be able to, uh, as I said again, through being very fit and being able to train in this environment uh, to, as I said again, dictate the pace of the game. Uh, we're also very fortunate, as you said again, in terms of just general development, that we can always be outdoors on grass. Uh, so all players are going to benefit from that and become better players as well. So yes, we're, we're, we're in a unique and, and great situation. Thomas, when I, I noted that you were coming on here tonight, many of your former coaches that you work with at TFC in the academy uh, were raving about how much you helped them in their young careers. Uh, Michael Stefano comes to mind and wanted me to make sure to say hello. Anthony Capitosta, who you know, many people who you helped a guide and, and, and help nurture in the coaching business. How important is it, Thomas, for a young coach to really go overseas, South America, and in North America to learn and understand the game fully before they decide to make this uh, the career that they want? Well, it's, it's very important, Anthony. I, I actually took my, my B and my A license while I still was a player. I was 27, 28 years old. Uh, we had some free time in the off season. I, I decided to. Uh, uh, I was always a great student of the game, but I, I, I needed to get better. I needed to get uh, more organized. I needed to be un understand what uh, what it was like to build a, a proper session from simple to complex. Um, I went abroad and, and studied other other coaches and other teams. I've read books of uh, other sports as well. You know where you can learn from it. But, particularly about the applied psychology in sports, which is so important, and how to manage people. I think that's great. We're going to go with staff with, with psychologists, with nutritionists, and experts in, in a lot of fields that can, I said again, can help us to be uh, uh, successful. So uh, young coaches, and, and I've always encouraged coaches, be it Dave Serrick and be it Frankie Alp, who've become head coaches in, the, in MLS, uh, to be good students of the game and, and uh, to continue your education, which is so important. So I'll, I'll do that again here, and, and, and then hopefully we'll, we'll have some young assistant coaches that, uh, that are able to walk away and, and then learn something, uh, which I think is, as I said again, important. I'm, I'm here to, uh, to spread my knowledge, so to speak, and, and, and take players and staff underneath my wing and, and, and try you know, for us to excel as a group and make them as individuals better. Well, I know as a fact, there's a lot of people that miss you up here in Toronto and that would love to see you uh, have a successful season with Tampa Bay and win the championship. But just one more thing before we let you go, Thomas. You had a, a wonderful experience and, and a part in this movie, The Next Goal Wins. Talk a little bit about uh, this project that you were part of not too long ago. Uh, it was just incredible. I mean, I was still part of U.S. soccer. I had some downtime. Uh, the president of U.S. Soccer, Samuel Gulati, asked me uh, when he was approached by the president of American Samoa because they needed some help. 
uh, if they could bring in some technical advisors and, and uh, guide them through a World Cup qualifying phase. Now, this is a team that was ranked last in FIFA, had lost 31 to nothing against Australia, which is the worst ever uh, World Cup qualifying defeat, had not scored in 10 years. Uh, so, I, again, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I travel well, I'm Dutch, I, I love uh, uh, engaging in, in looking at new cultures. I've uh, never been to Polynesia, the part of the world, and, and, and so again, just like with the Rowdies, it was a little bit of a no-brainer. And, and uh, you know, the, it was just incredible. It was one of the, the greatest journeys I've ever ever taken. You know, take a team that had never won and never scored a goal to being able to win a game and, and, and be successful and shed all their demons and, uh, uh, you know, do it with, with American Samoas that are real warriors. Uh, and, and, and guys that over time continued through adversity and losing games kept coming back. And, and that intrigued me as well. Why do they continue to play? And, and very simple, the passion, the love for the game. Uh, and, and that really, really uh, rekindled my uh, spirit and my passion of, of, of what football is all about. So it was, uh, was very refreshing. Thomas, where can people watch this? Is it st is still somewhere that people can have a look at this uh, movie, The Next Goal Wins, somewhere? Yeah, you can you can buy it on, on, on DVD. It's still running in some cinemas uh, throughout the world. Uh, um, you know, so, uh, yeah, people have the opportunity to, to, uh, to get a DVD uh, through iTunes, I think it is, or, or some other methods. Outstanding. Listen, Tom, we really appreciate your time. We wish you nothing but success with the Tampa Bay Rowdies. The best of the holiday season to you and your family. And again, as I've said to you, there's a lot of people up here that have a lot of fond memories of you and cannot forget a lot of the knowledge you brought here to Ontario and to the Toronto area. So they want to wish you the best of success with Tampa Bay, Thomas. Thank you very much, Anthony. Great for having you on and good luck for the show, which is a which is wonderful. I appreciate it. Thomas Rongen, head coach of the Tampa Bay Rowdies, one of the class acts in the game, and he is a guy uh, that was really special to have in this market in Toronto.